Hello everybody, Nick here at Scott and Nicky. We appreciate you stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. Now, today's tech video, we're actually gonna be covering a topic we've actually already done a few videos on, but we still get a lot of questions about. So we need to cover some of those frequently asked questions. And of course, we're talking about displacement on demand or DOD. Sometimes it's also called active fuel management, AFM. They're all the same in the LS and LT family for GM's engines. We do kits, we've done videos where we've uh, actually done one on a V6 at my shop. We've also done the LS and LT videos. And we even have some more coming up for different options for those kind of things. But we get calls all the time. Guys are going, hey, I watched your video, but I still have some questions. So here's another one where we get to answer some of those questions. We're gonna cover four topics here today. The first one, I bet we get more messages, calls, Facebook posts, YouTube comments, everybody in the world asking, do I have to tune my computer when I do a DOD delete. Yes, there is no way around this. There is no special trick. Believe me, if there was, it would actually be in our best interest to tell you guys as well. There isn't anything we're keeping secret. We know this can actually be kind of difficult and we wanted to cover some of that real quick. The function of DOD does need to be removed from the computer and mean when I mean that, I mean a laptop hooked up, the proper software hooked in and they actually reflash the computer where everything stays the same, but the DOD function has been removed. That is actually a pretty serious distinction because we get guys that go, hey, I got a buddy, you know, he's got, you know, he's got a little, you know, a dongle thing or a little handheld programmer, you know, that'll work, right? Not really. Those little OBD2 things you stick in, you find them on Amazon or eBay or wherever online, and you know, they stick in your OBD2 port and they stay in there. They keep the uh, computer from triggering displacement on demand. And that's actually the key distinction here. You need to actually tune it out of the computer and flash it versus some of these things just keep it from being triggered. Once you remove this system from your engine, the computer technically still wants to know if it's there or not. So if you just have a device that all it does is keep it from triggering when you're going down the highway or real low loads like it usually does from the factory, well, if it's not there and you have one of those devices, it can still freak out. It can go into limp mode. It can cause drivability issues and stuff like that. And that's the thing. We have yet to find any of these devices that you can buy online that are that quick, easy, cheap fix to get you down the road. So we've had customers that have plugged them in, hit the highway, and they're like, hey, everything's fine. 10 miles, 50 miles, sometimes even 100 miles. And all of a sudden, check engine light comes on. It goes into a limp mode. It starts freaking out. And then you got to have the thing towed. I know that's not what you want to hear. The reason why we have so many people try to find a shortcut for the tuning is we understand that <clears throat> even though for some reason taking apart almost half the engine to do the job isn't really the big problem, the tuning seems to be the most complicated. Where do you get it done? Well, I can tell you that there are more and more local shops and facilities in big cities and small towns alike that are starting to get the proper software to do this job. So most of the time you can get it done locally. Another tip is performance shops. If you have a shop, then you always see them build, you know, Camaros and Corvettes and pickups and other things that use GM stuff. They have that software to do that as well because they have to do it to performance vehicles that come with it. Remember, DOD came on Camaros and Corvettes and all sorts of different things as well. So that's another thing to keep an eye out for. Here's another tip. If your displacement on demand is going to be replaced in the future. It hasn't started to malfunction yet, so you can still safely drive it. You can actually still take your vehicle as it is to those places and go ahead and have that function removed from the computer the same and still drive it. It'll be fine. And then you do the physical delete down the road. That is actually a nice little trick that everybody's been doing. And we found out that's another easy way to get in and out of this in a weekend instead of trying to find a tuner, towing your vehicle somewhere, or mailing off your computer is another option. If you Google DOD delete tune, you can find a lot of options. Mail order, order tuner. Uh, I think there's another one. Uh, PCM of NC is actually a, uh, another company that we've seen before. We are not affiliated with any of these. We don't have any personal experience with them, but you can read reviews online and judge for yourself. Some of these services, you simply pull your computer out, overnight it to them through the postal service. They get it done in a day, overnight it back to you. Might be hundred bucks, 200 bucks, maybe 300 bucks, but peace of mind with a good company getting it done right. That way, you know you're good and you're done. So, wish we had more tricks and tips for how to do this easier, but as of right now, there is no secret. I can plug this thing in for 50 bucks and just leave it be. You might end up running into problems like we've heard so many customers before. Now, the second one, 
when you're doing a DOD delete with variable valve timing. GM has been telling us that you need to replace the VVT bolt, the cam bolt. It's, you know, we've talked about this thing before. It's actually a big oil pressure like valve that holds the camshaft sprocket to the front of the cam. Well, these things have been out. The manufacturer that makes these for GM, these are real high-end pieces. They have been down for some time and they're doesn't look like they're gonna be letting up anytime soon. So these might be out of stock for a while. Matter of fact, you can't really see it, but this is actually a used one from the V6 video Dane and I did. What I found out after a couple phone calls and talking to some people, GM actually does have a torque spec to reuse this one time. I couldn't believe it. The normal torque spec when you have a new one of these is 48 foot pounds and then 90 degrees more, 90 degrees turned. If you're going to reuse one of these once, maybe twice at the very max, you can do that same 48 foot pounds in 50 degrees, roughly half of that same angle sequence. That's pretty trick that, and pretty nice of GM to actually give that information because a lot of y'all have been doing these and this has been holding you up. So if you can't find a new one from us, we wanted to let you know there is a method to actually reuse these. Be careful of buying uh, aftermarket ones. We have seen some real cheap knockoffs online. They're really cheap and we have seen they break right where the threads end and meet the fat part of the body here. We have seen them break. I don't think you want that and I wouldn't want that either. So once again, buy good quality stuff. We understand everybody's trying to save a buck and we also understand you're trying to get the job done, but be careful with something like that. The next one we're gonna talk about is oil pressure. We've had a few phone calls. This isn't that common. <clears throat> People do a DOD delete. They start the truck back up and they're noticing a little oil pressure. What could be the cause? Now, I will say there are a few instances where actually the thing is, you never really paid attention to your oil pressure before. You do the job and now you're really looking at the dash going, did I do everything right? Did I do everything right? Is there a check engine light on? Is that on? And all of a sudden you look and you go, has that oil pressure always been that low? It's common, it happens, and it's okay. What you need to know is this. According to GM's specifications, hot idle for like say a 5.3, 6.2, doesn't matter. Hot idle oil pressure can be as low as five PSI with more normal being around 10 to 15. We know that sounds kind of low. Personally for me, most of my vehicles have never gotten that low, but we do have some people that work here. They have high mileage trucks, it is that low and they do just fine. They even use it for towing or performance usage or stuff like that. It does work out okay. I would be more concerned about the five PSI, but you need to know that that's okay. You know, 20 PSI cold, 10 to 15 hot, you know, 40, 30 to 40 PSI hot cruising is another one, you know, 2000 RPM going down the highway. That's all considered normal. So maybe you never looked at that gauge and now you're seeing it. Now you know the numbers that you're supposed to be getting. For those of you that did keep an eye out for your oil pressure, did the job, and now you're noticing a big drop in oil pressure, there's a few things you need to keep an eye out for when doing this job. We've talked about it a couple times before, we wanted to recover it here. The camshaft retainer plate on the front of the block has this built-in orange gasket on the back. And this actually does connect the oil passages for the lifters that go up and down the block. It comes up and comes back around and that this is what seals it off. Now, it's kind of hard to see here. We'll get Dane to get a close up. That gasket does stick above the surface a little bit here. If you take yours off and you can feel that there is, it is flat, it's like glass all the way across, that gasket has been compressed all the way and you taking this off and putting it back on, there's a good chance there's gonna be an oil pressure leak here. And it's an internal oil pressure leak. So you start up the truck, there is no external leak. This is behind the timing cover. So it leaks right back down in the oil pan. So. That's another thing to keep an eye out for. If you have a higher mileage truck, call it 120, 150,000 miles, something like that, and you're buying a DOD to leak kit for, from us, go ahead and snag one of these. I think this with the, the correct bolts that you need for these is less than 25 bucks. Small peace of mind, it is literally in the heart of the job you're doing. <clears throat> if you uh, do one of these jobs, have a little oil pressure, this ends up being the culprit. Believe me, doing that a second time, you would have wished you had spent 25 bucks to get one of these. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Here's another thing to keep in mind. Some of y'all go ahead and replace the oil pump. It is not really necessary when doing a DOD delete to replace the oil pump, but some people like to. Higher mileage, same thing, a peace of mind. They just want to go ahead and, hey, it's got 150, 180. We have some customers that go 250,000 miles before the system finally fails. Pretty impressive. 
So they go, I just want to go ahead and replace it for my own peace of mind. And there's nothing wrong with that. Keep them in stock, good quality uh, GM oil pumps, put one in, go down the road. But you need to make sure to get the torque specs correct on the four bolts that hold that pump to the block. There is no gasket and sealant goes between the pump and the block. That proper torque spec is what you need. Too tight, you can actually start distorting things and cause a you know pin line leak in distorted surfaces. Not common, but it can happen. The bigger one, your oil pump pickup tube. These bolt directly to the oil pump and there's an O-ring here. This is the most common thing we see for oil pressure problems. You pulled this down out of the way, you pulled the pump back off, you put the new pump back on, you put the new O-ring on there, yay, I put a new O-ring, I did it right. And when you put it back on there, something happens and you either crush that O-ring, you rip it, you roll it, you tear it. And it causes, the, on the suction side here, remember this is on the suction side of the oil pump, what that causes is for this to draw air in with the oil. And so you're still getting some oil fed to the engine, but you're getting air in there too. The air compresses, it lowers the oil pressure. It's also just not good in general. It will tear up an engine very quickly. So when you're doing these jobs, be extra careful. Keep an eye out for certain things. Make sure to lube up that O-ring really good and be extra gentle when putting it in there. Don't just there cram it in there like a, like a moron like I have when I was younger. Once again, learn from my mistakes, right? So when it comes to oiling problems, those are the things you need to keep in mind because these are the most common issues we see. The last thing I want to talk about is actually kind of unique. We don't really cover these years very much, but they're the very first years. So actually, like I said in our other DOD videos, DOD did not start with the 07 new body style trucks. It actually started back in 2005. And some of the first to get it were things like a, a GMZ Envoy, like an Isuzu Ascender and the, and the Chevy Trailblazer, like all those weird midsize SUVs, you know, they actually got some V8s. It wasn't just a Trailblazer SS, I got an LS2. They put regular 5.3s and stuff in some of those small SUVs. They actually got some early versions of DOD and they're pretty unique. It is still the 24X, you know, crankshaft, but then it's in a Gen 4 block. It's a weird mix of parts. Now, when doing a DOD delete on that, our kit will work on those. So if you're working on an 05 or 06 body style of one of those SUVs with like a 5.3 or the 05 to 06 LS4, the front wheel drive, you know, Monte Carlo SS, Impala SX, Pontiac GXP, pretty cool cars, pretty unique, pretty trick. They have those same, they have a different kind of 5.3, but it has the same kind of problem I'm about to explain. DOD delete kit works for it as well, but there's one trick. Your upper cam gear looks like this. This is actually very unique when it comes to GM because it is a three bolt cam attachment with a what they call a V1X cam reluctor. It was one of the very few engines to get it, it was those years. They never made a 1X upper cam gear with a single bolt attachment. If you're wondering why this is a big deal, maybe because you bought one of our DOD Delete kits and bought a single bolt DOD Delete cam. Now you're wondering, well, how do I use that cam with this? Well, you can't, you have to buy the right cam because they don't make another one of these gears. So it's actually the camshaft. If you noticed all of our DOD Elite 5.3 cams specifically say 5.3 liter trucks. If you are doing a DOD Elite on those weird years and weird vehicles, please give us a call. We'll help direct you in the right, uh, the right direction. Really what you need is some of the early truck camshafts, the 99-06 to 5.3 Silverado, like an LM7. Sometimes an LQ4 is also like a small upgrade camshaft, or we also have a Tow Power Plus cam that is actually a pretty good little camshaft for most 5.3 applications that want stock spring, stock push rod, stock converter, but they want a mild upgrade. Those are all three bolt attachments, but non-DOD. And some of those are a little bit more expensive camshafts, unfortunately, but if you have any questions, call us about that if you're working on the weird years, the early years, and we can make sure to get all this stuff straightened out. It doesn't happen very often, but we do get a phone call from a customer that, oh, I bought this kit and this won't work. Oh, I, yeah, you don't have a truck. That's kind of the problem. So we appreciate you guys stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. We do these every Friday. We cover all sorts of different topics from simple stuff like this. We try to do dyno videos as much as we can where we're not so overran with part shortages or just customer builds coming out of our ears with all sorts of cool badass engines being built. So please give us a like, subscribe, 
on YouTube, comment and share in Facebook and, and, and email us. Let us know and message us and ask questions. This is how we come up with the ideas for a lot of these videos. We help share. You might have a question that thousands of other people have as well. So you got one, let us know. And we can help out hot rodders like you and me. So I will see you guys next Friday for another one of our tech videos. Thanks for stopping by.